So good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, I'm Dan from uh, Vietnam. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome so you, to our you, conference. Have you, have you ever been to Vietnam? Uh, unfortunately, not yet, doctor. Okay, now <laughs> but, here, but here. I would love to. I would love to. Oh, but here, you know, where where you working for? I mean, which university are you working for? Yeah, I'm attached with the University uh, Technology Mara. Hopefully, you know, maybe we will have some, I mean, cooperation with some Malaysian university. So hopefully we have a, we sign the MOU and then, then you can come to my university, okay? I see. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how is, uh, how is the weather in, in Vietnam now, now in Canto? Uh, you, you, you mean the weather? Yeah. So hot now, so hot and rainy. Ah, I see. Hot in the morning, hot in the morning and rainy in, 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 uh, yep. at the end of the day. Of the end of the day. Uh, it has been raining in Kuala Lumpur since uh, last night. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it could be it could be still raining until probably late evening today by yeah. the look of it. Yep. Okay, doc, uh, Mr. Anesh Ganesan. How are you, nice, man? Doc. I'm fine. I'm fine, doctor. How are you? <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's yeah, very nice to meet here. you. You I'm are now attached here. with the with the government ministry, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm with the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, as an officer, are you required actually to to submit research paper as well as part of your KPI or? It it is. Uh, there's three of us. Uh, who has been appointed by the uh, government of Malaysia as subject matter experts uh -huh. uh, pertaining to uh, land matters. So a uh, part of our, our evaluation for each year, we have to present some papers. I see. Okay. Uh -huh. So it is so part of the requirement. So your performance exactly. evaluation, actually. Uh, exactly. It's uh, besides what we, uh, we do, uh, these are added uh, feathers to our hat, you can say. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, at least I know there are some requirements for the government officers or uh, some ministry that uh, the officers are required actually to do to extend probably uh, <clears throat> their uh, roles and responsibility by including the uh, doing some research actually. Yeah, which is which is good, which is very good also, right? Okay. Because we stay abre stay abreast with it, and uh, even uh, it helps us a little bit in understanding the uh, the outside world rather than being in our own cocoon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm expecting actually, Doctor Doctor Harifa, uh, to join in. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> before we start, this is the latest update that I have. Can I? Uh, you see my my screen, right? Okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> allow me to update some, some status, okay? How about the doctor chair, maybe you need to give a multiple sharing, okay? Because after that, we can share together, okay? Yeah, of course, okay. of course, yeah. of course. After that, after that, after that. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> before we start, I would like to share with you the, the final list of the participants in this particular virtual conference, okay? Initially, we have 13. Actually, one participant by the name of um, <clears throat> Dr. Harifa. Huh? Yeah, Dr. Harifa Muhammad No. She is actually uh, <clears throat> scheduled to present three papers. She has submitted three papers, okay, to this conference. Um, <clears throat> number two, and then uh, number eight, and also number 11. All right, but uh, to the last minute just now, she opted actually to submit the uh, the <clears throat> the video, the pre-recorded video presentation instead of attending this conference. So she will not be attending this conference. She will be submitting the videos of all the three research papers. Okay, of all the people that has been conf confirmed, basically just Anesh. Dr. Dr. Dan, can I call you Dr. Dan or Dr. Kai? Dan, Dan, we can say Dan, easy for you, Dan. 
Ok. Thái thái là thái này mình sơn em, thái này sơn em, thái công đen, thái bất Việt Nam sẽ thái công dân ok. Yeah. Ok. Alright. Dr. Sarah lah actually has confirmed also but she has not joined yet from University Tun Hussein and the rest either they don't confirm up to this point or uh, they change actually to submit the, the the recorded video. So what I have in, in, in my record I now confirm is only outstanding Dr. Sarah lah from uh, University Tun Hussein. So <clears throat> I've sent the link to her, but uh, so far she has not responded yet. But anyway, if it is uh, the case, then probably we will continue. We will start with just probably two, three of us. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Why? Because we used to have uh, quite a, a, a number of presenters, but. Um, this is going to be a small number, so we are going to get more intimate and personal, okay? So we can we can take probably more than 15 minutes for each of the presentation and we can have more time for the Q&A, actually. So there is also a plus point <laughs> for, 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 for having a small number of participants, all right? So maybe I can start with a, a bit of a background about this conference uh, before we actually start with your presentation, okay? So while we're waiting for Dr. Sarala to join in. All right, can I uh, can I start now? Okay, Dr. Sarala is in. Okay, Dr. Sarala is in. Dr. Sarala, welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. I just actually updated the list of the presenters for our virtual conference today. So we oh. end up with only three of you. Okay, Dr. Dan from yeah. uh, Kanto University, uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Anesh Ganesan from uh, Ministry of uh, Energy and uh, Natural Resources. And you, Dr. Sarala from University okay. of Hussein. Okay. Uh, okay, Doctor. Dr. Harifa is expected to join, but then uh, to the last minute just now, she mentioned that she will she will be actually submitting her pre-recorded video presentation. Dr. Harifa actually has three papers to present. Anyway, uh, we will not be having uh, we will not be having her in this virtual conference. She will be sending the video of the of the uh, presentation instead. Okay. So let me start a bit about the background about this conference. And then after I'm done, we can uh, immediately continue with the, uh, with the presentation by, by all of you, okay? Uh, Dr. Okay. Dan, you're, you're supposed, you're, you have a meeting, right? Some, sometime after three? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I think I should be finishing uh, much earlier than three o'clock, don't worry. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let me go back. Okay, I would like to welcome you all in this conference. This is the third installment of International Conference on Management, Economy, Education, Technology, and Social Science 2022. In short, we call this conference METEC 2022. All right. Uh, the first conference that we have in 2020. Uh, we have the physical conference at that time is before the COVID-19 incident. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we have the physical conference in Tamu Hotel. So <clears throat> that was business as usual. Very interesting face-to-face -face type of kind of uh, discussion and presentation. And in 2021, we have virtual conference like this. And also we give opportunity for participants to join or to participate in the conference by submitting their pre-recorded video presentation. Today, we have the third installment in Malaysia, the COVID-19 uh, movement mm -hmm. control order has been, uh, has been uh, <coughs> relieved, so-called. So now the border is open, uh, especially for foreign uh, visitors or travelers to come to Malaysia actually, yeah. Uh, there's a small requirement with respect to COVID-19, but 
that is not particularly uh, difficult to address. Basically, you have to have the, the booster shot, you know. Uh, you have to show the that you have been uh, <coughs> subjected to to, uh, to to test, COVID-19 test, very simple test and so on. So <clears throat> now, the international travelers can come to Malaysia uh, for business and also for the recreational as well. No problem. However, this the, the, the border has been open since 1st April 2022, about almost two months back. But the, um, the pickup volume has not been uh, uh, significant yet. As far as the tourism industry is concerned, our ministry informed the other day we have received in total about half a million visitors to Malaysia since the, the border is open. Yeah? But uh, we expect the number to increase soon in the next couple of months when people are more comfortable and then uh, more confident with respect to international traveling. So if that happens, I hope that this, uh, our future conferences, we will be able to, to have it uh, physical face to face, you know, at this specific venue that we are, that we just like old times sake, okay. But now it seems that the number has not been able to we have not been able to receive uh, the minimum number required for face-to-face -face conference so far. Okay, that's why we still continue with the with the virtual conference as well as uh, pre-recorded video presentation. Okay, <clears throat> so the program is very simple. I start with my opening session. I am expected to finish around, you know, two fifteen or 2.20 for that matter. And then we will start with the presentation session per the schedule that I've uh, listed earlier. Okay, Dr. Dan has a specific request uh, that he like to start first because Dr. Dan has got a meeting at around three o'clock. Okay, so he has to go after, after three. All right, so this is the list of the, <clears throat> of the presenters scheduled earlier, but as I said, we only managed to get three. Uh, the rest either opted for uh, video presentation. They are submitting the video to us. Uh, two of them actually did not, did not make any commitment at all. Didn't tell me or did not confirm with me. Uh, considering that this participant actually have registered and also paid uh, uh, the fee, the conference fee. So... <clears throat> Like in the previous conferences, I expect that many of them will be actually submitting their video to us. Okay? Because they are not able to join. So in this case, we will have Dr. Dan to start first. And then Dr. Sarala second. And Anesh, the third speaker. Okay? And then we will be done for the day. Great, which is great. Also, Dr. Chair, you, you can, can share us again the multiple sharing for the screen. We cannot show about the PPT uh, PowerPoint here. I cannot share the, the PowerPoint, okay? So we have to, to give us the right to share the... Yes, yes, yes. You will, you, will, you will receive that. Can you give me five minutes? I need to inform uh, <clears throat> the guy next door to, uh, to stop the... Uh, there's a lot of construction going on around here. I need to inform them that we are having this session. Okay, can you give me five minutes? Continue. Uh, just now, Dr. Dan mentioned about uh, we have to, uh, to, I have to allow sharing of your presentation material so that everybody else can see the presentation. Yes, we will do that, and we have been doing that since we, uh, since we started this virtual conference. So don't worry about it, okay? <clears throat> I think the most important thing is um, <clears throat> that you guys need to know basically what, what happened next after this conference, okay? So, <clears throat> in summary, what next is going to happen is that we will be um, <clears throat> generating your conference certificates, certificate as presenter, okay? Uh, 
So this certificate is in the form of uh, is a digital certificate in PDF format. Will be provided to participants who register as presenter. Okay, either face to face or virtual conference or video presentation. So our commitment is to provide this certificate within a week after the conference. The next thing that we do after this conference is to publish the video, the presentation video or the pre-recorded video presentation of those participants who register as presenter video presentation. Okay, in our YouTube channel, also within a week after today. Um, <clears throat> and then we will uh, provide the URL so that the participant can actually access to their video and respond if there are some comments from the from the viewers the next thing is about the publication there are two publications one is the proceeding conference proceeding book publication the second one is the general publication of your of your research papers okay so in short the publication of conference proceeding uh, normally with our commitment is to, to complete within a month from today and publication in general is within three months from today. But that is also depending on the date of, uh, of the conference. In this case, uh, METAC 2022 is uh, today, 25th of May. Uh, <clears throat> as we mentioned earlier in our email correspondence and also in our website, uh, we publish journals four times a year. Okay, March, June, September and December. So the next uh, publication issue is June 2022. All right. So those papers submitted in this conference, which is today by 25th of May, uh, we will have time actually to publish in June 2022 issue. So that's the, the target. However, for instance, if we have a conference in July, early July, then the next publication of our journal is September. Okay, so that will take about you know two to three months uh, for the paper to be published in the in the journal. So that's what I'm saying is between uh, maybe as soon as within two to three weeks, or as late as about three months from the date of the conference, depending on when we have our our conference. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I want to share with you is, you know, just uh, to get some idea how the certificate of presenter presenter looks is going to look like. So, is a sample of it is here, okay, in this in this uh, slide. So, there will be uh, the title of the certificate and then the the name of the presenter, uh, the title of the research paper, and then also the name of the conference and the date, okay. Uh, Dr. Dan uh, has a request, basically. Yeah? Dr. Dan, you have a request to put uh, two names in your certificate. Yeah, yeah, two names. Okay, maybe two, two of us here. Two of us here. Okay, yeah. My colleagues, uh, okay, yeah. Is it, it yeah. okay? Is it yeah. okay if we provide you two certificates? Two certificates. Uh, one for okay. you, and the other one is for oh, your colleagues. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, yeah. Okay, okay. then we will produce yeah, two certificates. Okay. It's okay, it's okay, yeah. Okay, because our <clears throat> our commitment is actually to produce or to uh, prepare certificate for the corresponding author as well as the co-authors of the papers. If you have three co-authors, we will also produce the certificate for all those three. Uh, some have five, even seven authors, co-authors in the paper. So we just produce five, seven accordingly, okay? That is our... Uh, our deliverable. So, uh, doctor. <clears throat> doctor. Yeah, doctor. Sarah. Doctor Shafi. Yeah, doctor Shafi. Uh, in that case, uh, can I also request because uh, my research also I have actually submitted the full paper. Yeah. Um, in the paper I have actually uh, mentioned my co-author as well. So, is it possible uh, for you, uh, if if you could provide me a uh, uh, certificate for my co-author as well? Yes, yes. That is our that is our standard <laughs> deliverable. Great. All co-authors yeah, mentioned in your papers 
will be provided with the certificate. The presenter certificate. Is yes. It? Certificate oh, okay, as presenter. Great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Individually. Uh, so, okay. So I I don't have to submit uh, an email or anything uh, no, no, for no, this no. request. No, no, no. It is 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 given. It's a it's a it's a oh, by it's default given. actually. Yeah. Okay, so it, as long as it is in the, uh, it appears on the paper that we have submitted, it, uh, we will be given the certificate, right? Correct. As correct. presenter. That's okay, right. doctor. Thank All right, that's great. Thank you, doctor. All right. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, uh, next to the certificate of uh, participation is uh, <clears throat> if we, if you have, if you, uh, if you participate in our conference as a <clears throat> presenter pre-recorded video presentation, uh, your video will be published in our YouTube channel called Academia Industry Network here. <clears throat> All right, and then the title or the, the main page of the of the video, and then the title of the video, your name, and the title of the video. Okay, the maximum characters for the title is at hundred. Okay, specified by YouTube. If we have more, if your title is very long, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to actually, I have to uh, truncate uh, your your title so that it meet the mean the maximum uh, hundred characters. Okay, and then we have under <coughs> over here is a brief description about your research paper. Basically, I extract the information from your uh, abstract actually. Okay. And then I put in under brief description of this video. All right. So this is how it's going, going to look like. <clears throat> okay, the next one is we are going to talk about the publication of the conference proceeding book. Okay, this conference proceeding book is given with the ISBN number. Okay, so we have to apply ISBN number to uh, our national library, who is the uh, rightful agency who monitor all the integer standard book number. Okay, uh, <clears throat> and then when, once we publish the CPB or the, the confirmed proceeding book, it will be published with the with the respective ISBN number. Okay, displayed prominently on the first page and also on the subsequent pages under header. Yeah, and then uh, <clears throat> this is uh, this confirmed proceeding book is in PDF format. Okay, we don't we don't produce the the proceeding in the uh, online um, because for a very simple reason the your full paper is also going to be published in referee journal our referee journal our referee journal are all online so if we publish the proceeding book online we may uh, we may uh, have some problem with the <laughs> a lot of similarity issues Okay, so one has to be offline, the other one has to be online. Okay, so uh, to avoid such issue, so we have to do that. That's why it is not online for the proceeding book. All right, and then the next one <coughs> is uh, the outlook of how our proceeding book is going to look like. So we have a title here, uh, the first page, and then the, <coughs> the second page, which has the... Uh, uh, the ISBN number here, uh, some information, a short uh, preface, and then the abstract of this proceeding and the, and the table of content over here, and then followed by the, by, by, by the papers submitted to us, All right? So for this particular conference, uh, I expect we will probably be having more than 10 between 10 to 15 papers, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Uh, so we should be should be able to, but normally we commit within uh, one month, but we can actually complete the proceeding book within a week after today, provided, provided all participants submitted the full paper timely. As of today, today is the, the, the conference date. Um, there are few, if not more, have not fully submitted their full paper. Okay, they have just submitted the abstract, uh, but they have not yet submitted the full paper. 
I understand because <laughs> some some of us, you know, we work uh, <laughs> quite uh, extra time to complete some tasks and so on. And doing research paper is also a daunting task. Uh, we know that some of us work through the last minute and so on. Um, <clears throat> so that is okay. But I normally will email them. Our team will email the, the participant to uh, to expedite the submission of the paper so that we can actually complete the proceeding book as early as possible. Okay. And then the publication in our refrigerator. journal. Uh, <clears throat> normally, we will inform all participants of this conference uh, before we actually publish your full paper in our refrigerator. journal. Normally, that information, that email that we're going to send you is normally after we have uh, emailed you the uh, conference proceeding book one or two or three days after that then we'll send you email that we are preparing for publication of your full paper in the referee journal okay and then we normally allow time for the uh, participants or authors to uh, to make correction if they if they wish to their full paper so normally if they wish to make correction or revision or amendments uh, they will uh, they will have to request to us so that we will provide them the formatted version of the full paper according to our journal template all right so they can make changes in that particular formatted uh, paper and then uh, you can actually <clears throat> email back to us your final version of your full paper for publication in our refrigerator journal okay <clears throat> In our website, we mentioned there are seven uh, of our refrigerator journal covering almost all the research area that normally we face, <clears throat> like uh, education, pedagogy, business, economy, finance, uh, uh, social science, technology, uh, and also engineering. Right. So. <clears throat> Your paper will will be um, published in any one of these seven journals, which we will inform you um, <clears throat> accordingly via email before we actually publish. Yeah, and then we also help to a certain extent publish your papers in high index journal. In this case, in Scopus Index Journal. Okay, when we do review of your papers, our reviewers, our editorial board, normally will uh, will earmark few papers that we think or they think that the paper can be uh, scheduled for publication in high index journal. Not all, actually, yeah, only few selected ones. All right, and uh, normally we will inform the corresponding author or the participants uh, of that paper. Um, that their paper has been selected for publication in high index journal uh, <clears throat> and then we will get concurrence from that participant whether they agree or not okay because some participants don't agree to publish in high index journal for reason they want to publish in their own specific selected journal of their choice or their supervisor's choice <laughs> or the university's choice as well you know so they might have that kind of uh, requirement if they agree then we will proceed all right but uh, please bear in mind that we are not dealing with all scopus journal there is available in the scopus database only selected few that we work with some of the some of their editorial members so that we can actually value add provide value add when we help to publish your paper in this journal we can help to speed up the publication we also have in the in terms of doing the um, the grammatical check of your papers uh, we also advise if there are structural change that need to be done on the papers then we will uh, do so uh, so um, that is the value add that we, we we provide to the participants so that we want to, to make sure that the papers actually get published in the high index journal ASAP without much, without much issue. All right. 
at this time we have these two journals that is under our uh, our interest journal of legal ethical and regulatory issue jewelry uh, this is a scopus q2 and also international journal of early childhood special education uh, this is in the in web of science i think um, I don't exactly remember which index there is. There are several index for web of sign, but if uh, your paper is selected, probably I will definitely inform you which one. Okay. And there is also another one I just received uh, from email today, uh, but that is related to engineering. Okay. Also uh, Scopus, but I'm not sure which, which Q. I think it's Q3, if I'm not mistaken. So if any engineering paper that I come across and recommended by our editorial board or review committee then i will inform definitely the participant about that uh scopus journal okay so in summary one with respect to publication we will publish your paper in the conference proceeding book with ispn second we will also publish your paper your full paper in the referee journal okay our referee journal selected ones will be recommended for publication in high index journal uh, remember the two journal that i mentioned plus one engineering journal so if any one of the paper fall into that category and recommended by our review board we will uh, inform the corresponding uh, participant okay and a few points to note is that all manuscript all papers that you submit to us uh, please please uh, submit in microsoft word format uh, because we will need to make changes with respect to the header of the paper, the page number of the paper, and to many extent, actually, we also <clears throat> uh, make uh, formatting so that it uh, it meet uh, our standard formatting for publication in uh, proceeding as well as as uh, referee journal. Okay. So please uh, uh, send me to us the Microsoft Word format. And then the, <clears throat> all communication that we have between this conference and you uh, via email. So uh, it is very important that you provide us a valid email address. Uh, some email have a limitation, not, not being able to receive more than five megabyte of, or five mega, uh, megabyte of uh, file size. So, Maybe we win, when we send over the proceeding book, it might not get through. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, <clears throat> many co-authors for your certificate, okay, so the total size of the file may be quite big, exceeding probably 10 megabytes as well. So some email may not be able to accept that kind of uh, file. Okay. So another, another way we do is basically we will uh, share with you in the in the chat folder. We provide the URL and then you access that chat folder to download the file. There is also another possibility if the file happen to be very large. Okay. And then uh, <clears throat> our upcoming conferences, the yellow ones highlighted are the one that we are having currently today. The next one we're going to have is on 5th of June in Langkawi. Uh, we have quite a number of participants registering already in this one and then followed by uh, 18 june so we by, by the look of it we have our conference in two conferences every month either in kl in langkawi in putrajaya or penang so these are the four main locations that we are we are having our conferences all right so <clears throat> we have published all our conferences up to september 4 uh on the internet which uh con convey conference bay uh using that system so if you have already registered in this conference you can actually use the same id and password uh to log in again to these conferences if you are interested or if you have your staff or if you have your students advanced student who wish to join the conference and submit their research paper so your friends your colleague you know because of your KPI and so on, requirement and so on, please, you can share these uh, conferences with them. Okay. 
So <clears throat> that's all that I have to say that I share with you. So thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? No, no. No, Anesh, do you have question, Mr. Anesh Ganesan? No, doctor. No? Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Okay. All right. So now we come to the presentation. Uh, the first in the list is Dr. Dan. Dr. Yeah. Dan, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, but uh, give me the, the priority, you know, the, the right. Yeah, yeah. I, will, I, will, I will stop. Yeah, I will stop sharing mine. Yeah. Okay. I will stop here. Okay. And then. <clears throat> You can come to the multiple. Yeah, yeah. Multiple. I've already turned to multiple participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now you can actually open yours and then share your uh, your screen with us. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just okay. wait for me. Remember, Doctor Dan, just a short and sweet, maybe 12, 15 minutes kind of presentation, covering the objective of your research and then um, background or introduction and then. Uh, you know, <clears throat> literature review, and then you have your methodology, uh, data analysis and discussion, and finally, the conclusion. Excuse me, Dr. Chair, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so maybe uh, sometimes because my uh, loudspeaker, sometimes it's not connection, okay? If I speak, you cannot hear, you know, you can give me the sign, okay? Yeah. Okay. Clear. Yeah. So, so my, my colleagues will, uh, we give first again. Okay. Well, we are very happy to meet you on our meeting uh, 22. And now, Dr. Dan, on behalf of our team, we'll present our paper. Okay, yeah, thank you much, okay, my colleagues. Okay, so maybe uh, happy to meet you here, mm -hmm. Dr. Chair, and my, uh, okay, my presenter like uh, Anas or maybe uh, Sarala, okay, three of us, okay? Yeah. So we, uh, now my colleague is working for, I mean, a master thesis, okay, in Kentucky University. So we would like to focus on the management of assessment in activities of learning results of primary school. So nowadays in Vietnam, you know, primary school is the main focus on the education reform, okay? Yeah. Uh, first, I want to, to show you here the map of Vietnam. You can see, now here can tell you know, uh, at the, the end of uh, the South Vietnam, you know, Ho Chi Minh City and Cần Thơ here. Cần Thơ, you know, hopefully in the future, if you want to go to my university, now in the Cần Thơ University here. <coughs> and as upon Dr. Chair, maybe in the future, if you have like a site MOU or MOA, okay, you can come to my university, okay? I see. Yeah. Can, so Kento, now, I, Kento seems to be strategically located, you know? You are surrounded by sea on your, on yeah, your yeah, yeah, east yeah, side, yeah. on the west side, on the on the southern side, and you know? Yeah, yeah, you need to see, okay? Yeah, almost yeah. like an <laughs> island. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you much. Okay. So uh, my presentation consists of introduction, literature review, methodology, result, and discussion conclusion here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, as I told earlier, you know, primary education is uh, the main focus in Vietnam now because we have like the long time, you know, we have to the education reform. So Vietnamese Ministry of Education and Training, they have a lot of regulation on this one, okay? Up to maybe five or years now, okay? And as I told you, you know, we focus on a lot of things dealing with about a primary school. So mm -hmm. the key thing here we want to change, I mean, the basically, you know, the education from the, I mean, the base, you know, primary school is the base in Vietnam now. We focus on, I mean, the 2011 or 2020 and up to 2025 or 2030, okay? And uh, from the 1990s up to now, you know, a lot of authors in Vietnam, they write many reports telling about the primary schools and you tell about like the learning results, okay? So now in the past, okay, we used to use like the, how can we remark the student, okay, we give them the marks, but now, you know, we give the comments, okay, instead of remarks of Vietnam now. Okay. And maybe as I told you, you know, we have a lot of, I mean, the article, uh, issued by the Vietnamese education training, they focus on the primary education methods, okay, they change a lot. Then we have the new uh, textbooks for many, many subjects, okay, something. So now we, um, we would like, you know, to get to know, you know, in the small scale in the district, one district in the Cần Thơ, uh, Cần Thơ city now. Mm -hmm. In Cần Thơ city, okay, we have 
maybe over 10 districts. So we just focus on maybe the district around the, the Canton city now, near Canton University where we're working now. So like the Ninkyo, you know, uh, Vietnamese say Ninkyo, okay, set up a district, okay, near the, 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 the Canton University here. And the main goal, we want to search about how can we manage the assessment and activities here for four primary schools. And uh, we had a three specific ones. The first one we analyzed, synthesized, uh, similar, as okay, the, I mean, the basic management there. The second one, we survey the current situation of the managing here. And next we can propose a measure or solution to that. And the recent question, okay, just one, that means how are the assessment in activities of learning result of primary school student in Ninkyo district can tell Vietnam manage now, okay, how can we do that? And the participant here, we have number, we have 157 from the four primary schools around here, you know, and we choose the four primary school because, you know, we have the connection, okay, cooperation with the four school for university here. And during COVID-19, you know, it's very difficult for us to go to go far. So we choose, okay, the four rivalry schools near us, okay, and to get the data here, okay. And with the number here, we the we we separate into numbers, okay. Um, maybe you can see uh, on the screen, okay, the numbers are like four uh, rivalry schools here. And we come up with the first one we have. It is a mixed method, okay, between quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative, you know, be based on, I mean, the, the questionnaire to the primary teachers and the questionnaire for administrators. That means we want to know for the teachers, we want to know about how can you, uh, I mean, you give the question for the students, how can you manage, how can you correct, how can you mark the paper as a student, okay? How can you, uh, you store, you save the results, okay? And for the administrator, I think maybe, maybe something like the, the principles, okay, are precedence of the school. How can you manage the teachers, okay, to follow, I mean, some ways. And qualitative is that here, you know, as I told you earlier, because of COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot go out, you know, based on the questionnaire, we had open, open-ended question, you know, we ask the teachers whether you think it's good or bad, okay, or some changes, okay, how can we manage it better in the future, okay? Yeah. And here, you know, a, a lot of, I mean, hopefully maybe in the future, we can read our full text because I, I sent a full text already. If you need more information about that, you can put the full text because a lot of questions dealing with about how can we, we ask the teachers, we ask I mean, class, classroom teachers, how about administrator, is the way I told you, okay? Hopefully in the future, if you have the, you read the full text there. And maybe, I mean, all the participants here, I mean, respondents, they are, they, they ask the answer question, it's good for, I mean, the, the principal of the, the school, okay, how can you manage, better manage, okay, the way the teacher give lesson to the student or how the way they give the, the quiz or the test or something. And another way, the teachers in the classroom, okay, they say, it's okay, it's good, okay, interesting for, I mean, administrator to manage. Because, you know, for the assurance of the school now, I mean, because we teach, okay, and, and how can we manage? the way of the, the, the teacher do that, okay, and we make the, the result of the student or the, the, the learner better, okay. And in conclusion, okay, for the 157 participants, they have the opinion that, okay, it's good, okay, you had a plan, and it's good, okay, before you give the test, you have to understand all the regulation or rules from the school, from the district, or from the Ministry of Education from Vietnam, okay? And you understand that, okay? And how can you give it? Because, you know, we must follow, I mean, the rules or regulation from, I mean, the district or the, the city, okay? Up to, that means you put from the, sometimes the bottom up or top down, top down, okay? Regulation will do that, okay, yeah. And all the participants here, they, they read that. It's good for us, okay, to, to do like this, okay? And the last one, okay, I want to show you here the quantitative results. That means we, the question, what measurement should be taken to strengthen the management of students' learning outcomes? For the administrator, they say that, okay, it's good to master regulation, how we had the plan, you know, for training the teachers to do that, okay? And how can we correct the instruction, you know, for the teachers and how to organize, to evaluate, okay? 
the the kinds of the test okay and how for for the subject teachers i mean the teacher of math of uh, i mean teacher of math of um, some other courses okay because in the primary school we teach a lot of subjects okay for i mean the vietnamese language about the math about the physical education or something so the teachers say that okay it's good to enable a innovate let me make, make something new for the teaching methods in order to have the capacity development how can we organize teacher to participate the learning okay or do get a subway for the school and how can we use about the, the the thing here you know because of covid 19 we need to in improve about the teachers how to use it you know how to use technology because when when you use technology here how can the teacher they design the lesson or design the test and they can save it in the google drive or something you know and how can they keep the records of the student here and for the teachers in the classroom okay because teacher of classroom they they meet the they meet the student every day you know so how can they give the monthly evaluation results and how can they have the close connection between them I mean, the teachers and I mean, the principal at that time okay and for the the collusion here you know because you know as i mentioned about for the question we need to know how can we get to know the the assessment of the activities and learning results of the in school and we we get to know how 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 are they managed so the thing we come come up with the the, the thing is that for the, the final one the survey participants they share the view that okay the assessment okay here is very very necessary or very important okay for both the teachers and the, the principals okay the second one you know the objective of the result i mean that means they know that the reason why the importance of the testing and the reason why you have to give the test for the student okay follow the the guys the guidelines from i mean the district from the city or from the i mean the central government uh in the capital or something and the third one you know and the thing here we talk about pedagogical qualities okay and then the thing here for this one you know for the teachers in the classroom how can they they get more confident you know and they get more enthusiastic enthusiastic okay to devote to okay, get their life for teaching here or for for the student here for something so the four okay and the the level of management i mean in because we have the the rate, rate one, rate two, rate three, rate four, rate five. Okay, in, in the primary school in Vietnam, we come rate one to rate five for the management of its rate, its level, you know, sometimes different, okay? But we some, have something in common, okay? So the thing here, how can we, how can the teachers, okay, be aware of the level of management here? And the fifth here. Now, uh, the thing here, you know, we have a lot of assessment methods. But we need to know the well repair, okay? We have the, the clear objectives of assessment for all the teachers. And finally, you know, uh, we do think maybe we, the, the teachers of four school here, maybe they are not, I mean, excellent at that time. So they need to have the more, I mean, the input. I mean, they, they need to, to get some trainers or trainings, okay? Something like this, okay? Because, you know, for, I mean, for my colleagues, she's she, she, young now. But I mean, for I mean the, the teacher staff here, you know, they have many level. Most of the teachers, you know, and they, I mean the the I mean like they, their own teachers, okay, they are over 40, 50. But now we need to redo the new one, like my colleague, okay, just the young one, okay. How can the young one with the good, uh, I mean the, uh, I mean the good knowledge, okay, in order to 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 get the the education reform done, okay? So and limitation is mentioned, okay, we can focus on one district, okay, in, in Kanta. Hopefully in the future, you know, we need some more, you know, uh, around the, uh, around Kanta here or some in the Mekong Delta. You know, in the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, the lower one, we had the uh, 13 provinces. Mm. Hopefully in the future, we need to have the more stuff, okay, to do like yeah. this, okay? Correct. Okay, so uh, that's all for us. Okay, thank you for your kind listening. Okay, welcome to your question here, you know. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Dan. <clears throat> Well, I open up the floor if you have any questions specifically. Secondly, if you have any feedback, constructive feedback to Dr. Dan and, and, and his team. Anyone? Anesh, do you have? 
So anything about maybe the right maybe school level in Vietnam education or something, anything about Vietnam, I know. Because I'm working at the, as the dean of the School of Social Sciences and Humanity in Vietnam now. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I went to Malaysia and many years ago, I went to meet uh, Vi Nang, okay? To uh -huh. present my paper there just about 10 years ago, okay? Okay. And maybe I, I need around, uh, you know, around, because you know, anything you know about Vietnam, you can ask me about education or anything about that, okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm happy, happy to answer, okay? Right, right. Um, Dr. Sarala, do you have any, any feedback? Um, I just wanted to say, uh, I think they have done a very good job, actually. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, research because um, my area is also about teaching and learning. So I was very interested, you know, uh, listening to them, actually, just I mean, listening to Dr. Uh, Dr. Dan just now. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Hopefully, you know, you did get to know about teaching and learning in Vietnam now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dr. Dan, I, ha I have uh, one or two here. Just, just need to clarify with you. You mentioned in the earlier slide there is the, the Vietnam Educational Education Strategy 2011-2020. Yeah. Yeah, that strategy is already passed 2020. And yeah, you are working on this assessment basically based on the uh, roadmap provided by that particular strategy, right? Yeah. Okay. Follow up of that particular strategy, uh, uh, does the ministry or any anyone in the education ministry or the government agency uh, come up with the um, another roadmap or another document with respect to strategy and planning for education in Vietnam, 2022-2026, something like that? Okay, yeah. So I just want to, talk, to tell you, you know, in Vietnam, like some country around like China or Korea or Japan, like, like this, we focus much on, you know, the, the testing in Vietnam now. Because, you know, from when you finish grade 5, grade 9, or grade 12, yeah. you need to pass about the national examination. So the thing here, you know, I mean, we have a lot of documents from the Vietnamese Ministry of Education and Training. Every year, you know, they have the, the new one, okay? So we had to update with about the new one. So yeah. the thing here for the teachers, we had to to change a lot, okay, sometimes we feel pressure, you know, a lot of gas, okay, to do with that, okay, yeah. So the, the thing here, you know, we, because, you know, like China, you know, we, we focus on testing and we focus mm -hmm. on, I mean, the teaching and learning materials, okay. So mm -hmm. the thing here, we have the textbooks using nationwide and we have the tests nationwide or we have like the, I mean, the test bank. So we base on that one, okay, and everything we have like, from, I mean, the center to, yeah. I mean, to the last route here, okay? So we must focus on that, okay? So a lot of things, okay, we had to do with that, but it's a, the, the policy of Vietnam, you know? Hopefully, you know, we, but now we change a lot. Uh, now, okay, when we compare to 10 years ago, now, you know, in the past for the, I mean, the primary school, we just give them the marks for number one to number 10. We follow, uh, we follow on the French educational system, okay? But now, at the, I mean, at the end of the year, we just give like, 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 like I mean, the ABC, a, a, B or something, a, like, like American system or something, okay? A, a by plus, B, B, something. Or sometimes we, we write some work like good, excellent, okay? Like this, okay? We don't want to, I mean, to give some work, some like incent or make students feel embarrassed or something, okay? So yeah. the thing here, we, we think that, you know, for the young one, because in the future, like, like the future master of the country, you know, how can we make them, okay, confused, okay, when they go to school, okay? Or sometimes they get about incentive, okay, when they get to school. So the thing here, I mean, everything must be clear from, I mean, from the Vietnamese education, uh, Ministry of Education Training up, down, okay? We had a top down, okay, in Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, something like this, okay, yeah. Right. Okay, I have, I have another, uh, a bit technical about the way, the, uh, your data collection. You mentioned about 147 participants. Yeah. Uh, who are the, what, what? Who are these participants? Are they are they students? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Maybe I, I talk fast, so, so so maybe you can you can, you you couldn't catch up. The participant here. I, I just focus on maybe the principles. I mean, the president in Vietnam. We can say principal, not our president. You know, uh, school president, school principals. 
Okay, okay. Not, and, not student, right? Not student. Not, not, not student because it's okay. primary school. Because then uh, the, 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 the yeah, management of the school, the, um, <clears throat> the administrators of the school, right? Teachers. Exactly. Right. Administrators and the classroom teachers. Yes. And yeah. from the head up, uh, for example, the head up, the grade one, the head of grade two, grade three, grade four, five. I see. Okay. That okay. we focus on, I mean, administrator and the teachers only, not about the school. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, you also do a, a, a kind of mixed um, uh, mix uh, <clears throat> data, mixed data that you have. One, you do quantitative as well as qualitative, right? Yeah, excuse me again, Billy Swan, again. You do a, a mixed method approach of your data analysis. One is you, you think quality, quantitative, basically, when you do quantitative, typically you send over yeah. to them a questionnaire, right? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, before the COVID-19 in Vietnam, just about two years, like all the countries, you know, yeah. we just give a questionnaire, and the questionnaire, we have the open, open-ended at the end, ah, and with okay. open-ended, okay, they can write something, okay, yeah. and we write something like a report, report from the teachers, okay, and yeah. we write down like this, okay, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, we have online, we have Zoom or maybe the Google Meet, you know, to talk with them, okay, but cannot, could not miss face-to-face. -face. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry for that, okay. Mm. Questionnaire only and with the open ended question okay. later, and they write out all the ideas. Okay, obviously, yes. obviously, when you speak to them, you you speak to probably a selected uh, selected few of those participants, right? You don't speak to all of them, right? One hundred and forty-seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just some, some. Okay, because yeah. my colleagues, my colleagues, here, so she work. She, now she's teaching in one one, one school. She can talk with, I mean, I mean, just about 10 of them, okay? I see. Yeah, but okay. yeah, in uh, within her, her school, okay? Yeah, okay. but all the school, okay, we can just about the online telephone or something, okay? We Or we meet online, okay, not face to face, okay? Yeah. All right. So what, yeah. what do you plan to do with the with the outcome of this research? Do, do, do you want to extend this to the, to the government, at least your findings share with them? Or you want to establish another research, basically to to strengthen the finding and to have more concrete uh, outcome and then the cause of actions. Okay, now the thing here, you know, we do. She, my colleague, okay, she working for her MA thesis now. Okay. Okay. So, so it's the MA thesis now. Okay, so we do the we do the research. Okay, because we working for, I mean the the. The, the the cost name okay the the i mean the the, the branch name like the educational yeah. management so the thing here when we did the research here we want to to submit our report i mean the first one to this district okay mm -hmm. how can you we use about how can we manage the thing here how can we manage the assessment of the activities learning result yeah. in here in one district and after that how can we give we, we make it something like the rest, rest out, rest out and the thing here to uh, other district, hopefully. And after that, we hope to, to, to give it to another province in the Mekong Delta, I mentioned the Mekong Delta here, you know here, the Mekong Delta here, you may have uh, near near Nongburn or Simri, here the Mekong Delta here, we have the, the river, you know, we have the, the river from the Tibet, okay, to Vietnam here. Yeah. We have, we need, we, the Mekong Delta here, we have the 13 provinces. Mm. Okay, 13 provinces, okay. Mm -hmm. About a 20, it's over, over 20 million, a million population, okay. Yeah. We hopefully we have can spread out, you know, what the, the findings to, I mean, uh, as many as uh, private school in the Mekong Delta, okay. Hopefully we right. will do that, yeah. Right. So you have actually potentially more research that can be done, actually. Potentially more exactly, research exactly. that can be done. Exactly, and interestingly, exactly. if uh, you you get a, a different group of participants from different yeah. region, you yeah. know, yeah. district and so on, the outcome may not be similar, you know. The outcome can be exactly. different. It is more interesting to know, you know, uh, exactly, when, exactly. when you have a different outcome, different finding and so on, because you can analyze the data further. Uh, actually for the for the betterment of the of the of the research area that, that you are looking at now so uh, i have no further question i think your 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 research is very interesting um okay yeah so, thank you very much okay hopefully uh, dr chair and uh, some other here if you want to come to vietnam okay you can get my email you know 
you said yeah 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 I definitely definitely I, I, I look forward to actually to <laughs> to visit Vietnam now that <laughs> COVID-19 is hopefully behind us already uh, yeah yeah already already okay now now it's uh, under control now yeah yeah we will contact yeah. you dr dan okay we will okay, inform yeah, you yeah. I, i will personally yeah. probably email you uh yeah. we may we may be able to look at some uh certain extent of collaboration you know uh yeah. with you or with your university yeah yeah okay. that, that we will yeah. uh we can we can work it out later all right so yeah, thank yeah. you very much dr dan and your team i wish uh your colleague to uh, uh <laughs> for, for success in your research in your study okay, yeah thank you much okay yeah, okay yeah. and yeah. uh i hope i hope you know i will be able to cross path with you again in the new future all right so dr dan you can stay uh until probably you you, you think you want to go uh while, while you have the time to listen to the uh, presentation by the other uh, participant like anesh and also dr sarala okay All right. So next, I would like to call upon Dr. Sarala. Are you ready with your with your slides? Uh, yes, doctor. All right. Yeah. So I'll share screen, right? Okay. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, yes, I can. Yes. Just a minute, yeah. Uh, just for information, actually, this uh, this conference is recorded, and uh, I will uh, publish the recording in our YouTube channel, and then I will share also the URL the URL with all of you. So that maybe if you want to review back your presentation or the whole uh, going on of the of the conference, you can always do that. You know, by going back to the to the YouTube. Okay. All right. Uh, can I start now, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, doctor? Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Uh, this is uh, Sarala from University of Hussein of Malaysia. I am actually going to represent actually my team. Um, the other person is uh, Ms. Wino Shah. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of our research is a conceptual review of science technology, science technology engineering and mathematics STEM education in Malaysian schools. Mm. Okay. So um, the main issue is that uh, in spite of myriad efforts carried out by the government, the number of students enrolling in science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics uh, majors in tertiary education uh, keeps dwindling. This situation is expected to have a negative impact on Malaysia's economy gradually. Uh, scholars have discussed this issue based on two root causes. Uh, the first one is um, mm. yeah, my <laughs> the picture is actually <clears throat> obstructing my my slides. <clears throat> okay. I can see the slide clearly. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 on my screen actually. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, yeah, okay, it's it's managed. All right. Uh, so the first issue is that the decrease in motivation and interest among students to learn science and maths related subjects at secondary school. Uh, the second one is low exposure to STEM in secondary schools due to inadequate uh, in integration of science, maths, mm -hmm. engineering design process and technology in science and maths instruction. Um, yeah. Uh, this research is actually done to add to the current body of literature and raise awareness among educational stakeholders regarding this issue. So this uh, study particularly has uh, two research objectives. Uh, the first one is to explore to explore the current teaching learning practices that affect students' motivation and interest to pursue STEM education. And uh, the second one is to make practical suggestions 
in terms of instruction and teaching learning practices to attract more students towards STEM education, uh, STEM learning. Uh, this review will be especially beneficial for Malaysian secondary school teachers and curriculum planners to design STEM projects and lessons using teaching learning practices that can positively influence more students to pursue tertiary education and careers in STEM. Okay, a little bit um, information right, uh, regarding STEM education is that um, understanding students' needs in a learning environment help teachers to deliver instructions in ways that can motivate and interest students in the subject content. This shows the importance of needs analysis. The concept of motivation and interests are interrelated where motivation fuels interest and interest sustains motivation to learn. When STEM education is delivered effectively to motivated and interested students, it can help them develop the 21st century learning skills, such as critical thinking, independent learning, communication, uh, collaboration, problem solving, digital literacy, creativity, and self-reflection. STEM learn, uh, lessons or projects need to be designed based on real world issues and uh, the latest topics so that students can engage with activities in more meaningful ways and realize, and realize the importance of the lucrative uh, STEM industry. <clears throat> Uh, the problem uh, statement that uh, we have highlighted in the paper is that, in the research is that, uh, the number of students enrolling for STEM options at upper secondary school levels and STEM majors in tertiary education keeps uh, declining, keep declining at alarming rate. Uh, this goes against the national agenda of uh, producing graduates with 60-40 ratio, of which 60% should be STEM graduates. Uh, this is basically due to decrease in motivation and interest among students to learn science and maths related subjects at secondary schools. Uh, the second one is that low exposure to STEM education itself in secondary school uh, due to inadequate integration of science, maths, engineering, design process and technology in science and maths instructions. Uh, therefore, this shows that teaching learning practices in schools do not reflect uh, the guides and objectives proposed in the STEM education framework. So, uh, this study, uh, the main purpose of the study is to add to the current body of literature on the latest teaching and learning strategies for STEM uh, from uh, psychological domains of motivation and interest and also to address the two research objectives of the study. Uh, so the data collection, because this is a conceptual paper, so uh, we did a scoping review. We used a, sto a scoping review technique on more than 50 studies published between 2013 to 2021. Um, uh, it is actually, actually we looked at around 55 studies. Um, so we did a thematic analysis uh, in terms of data, uh, data analysis. So uh, the findings, okay, basically we, we actually uh, looked at the STEM teaching learning practices. Uh, so based on our, uh, our reading and our finding, our analysis, uh, we found out that um, the issues were related to the, in these five issues mainly, right, were identified. Uh, it's mainly about the inability to allocate time for STEM projects. Um, second, the dependency on theory and practice-based learning. Uh, third, lack of exposure to solving real-world problems. Um, fourth, engineering design process are only seen in robotic-related projects or competitions. Technology-based Technology-based learning and ICT facilities are only available uh, effectively uh, in selected schools. So uh, based on our review, we found out that uh, the current teaching learning practices for STEM failed to realize the focus and objectives of national STEM framework. Uh, 
The other aspect that we looked at uh, was related to students' motivation and interest for STEM, uh, which are actually influenced by five factors, five important factors, uh, which are actually, the, the first one is authentic learning environment. Uh, secondly, performance in assessments. Uh, thirdly, teachers' uh, teaching styles. Uh, fourth is the future goals. And lastly, socioeconomic status. Uh, therefore, the conclusion is that um, the current teaching learning practices for STEM actually involve the out of that five uh, aspects that we we found out, the outstanding uh, ones are actually lack of exposure to solving real world problems, uh, dependency on theory and practice based learning. Uh, this is basically like due to um, completion of syllabus on time and things like that. Uh, the other aspect that we looked at, uh, which was related to students' motivation and interest in STEM, uh, which uh, were found to be influenced by authentic learning environment, uh, teachers' uh, teaching style, socioeconomic status as well. Um, therefore, we recommend that uh, in, uh, we recommend three uh, issues here. The first one it was instructions. Uh, showing clear, teachers uh, can actually um, construe their lessons actually to show clear STEM integration in science and maths curriculum and providing equal access to ICT facilities and competitions. If not teachers, maybe the schools, maybe the, the, the what we call that, uh, ministry itself. Okay. Uh, teacher, yeah, teacher support, uh, in terms of teachers' uh, help, providing improvised instructional design and continuous training for themselves. Uh, student development, ensuring students are more uh, stimulated to develop self-efficacy and exploration skills for learning. Um, so with that, uh, thank you for listening and uh, take care. All right, so that's all my presentation is for today. Thank you, Dr. Sarala. Uh, welcome, Doctor. Very interesting, actually. Very interesting. I, I have, <laughs> I have the same, the same, um, the same thought about, you know, the question that you raised in your research, basically, why STEM uh, is not attracting enough, you know, from our from our student actually. Why are they not attracted? Why the numbers are dwindling? Like you say, it's yeah. actually is dwindling. It's it's it's, uh, it's reducing actually from our expected like 60, 40 breakdown actually sixty from STEM, forty probably from from a uh, social science area. <laughs> okay, yeah, but yeah, but but sixty is not achievable. I do not know exactly what number that you are referring to. What what is the number now? How much actually people, uh, our student, you know, finishing school. Um, understand actually the, the, the science, technology, and engineering. Do you, do you uh, have like the <laughs> we actually had this is actually uh, my students' uh, research work. Actually. So, so it is in the paper, uh, right? It is in, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in, the, in paper. the paper. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, if we have, but yes, yeah, saying it is, it is, it is uh, decreasing, right? The interest, mm, yes, yeah, over how many years that it? Uh, what we looked at was around 10 years. About uh, you're doing like a, yeah, you, 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 your, your research is based on the secondary data, right? You, you're reviewing yes, research, yes. you know, past research on that yeah. area. Are, are those uh, research papers are, are local from Malaysia or from international authors as well? Um, it's, it's a mixture. It's a mixture. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's okay. a mixture. But so basically, it, it, we are hmm. looking at, uh, we are looking at the situation in Malaysia. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you are referring those uh, previous literatures uh, regarding STEM, and I think there is a <clears throat> there is a certain degree of consistency that uh, students are not attracted to STEM, and that happens not only in Malaysia, but also in other parts of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the, the 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 phenomena is the is like. If not exactly similar, but okay, other countries are also having yeah. the same problem, only if yeah. not more. All right, 
So because uh, last time, actually, just to add on to this, um, um, if I may, Dr. Uh, last time we had this subject called EST, English for Science and Technology, yeah. uh, which was actually a very good subject. But unfortunately, um, not many students uh, seem to be taking the subject now. I'm not very sure whether it is even offered in schools, in secondary schools right now. Mm. Uh, because a few years ago, uh, the number of uh, Takers were very, they were actually dwindling, you know, from day to day, you know, it were, uh, because mainly because students were not able to score. Mm. So that was the main reason. <clears throat> yeah, okay. so uh, somehow, but it was actually a very good uh, move by the government actually to introduce this as STEM subjects in schools. Mm. But that was actually thought as a separate subject. But here, what we are recommending is to integrate this STEM design in mm -hmm. most of the subjects as much as possible, mm -hmm. so that so that students get the exposure of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm yet to see actually this uh, student of mine actually is uh, is in a in a, a very beginning stage, so okay. we are yet to actually collect data, you know, on this issue. But uh -huh, uh, hopefully, uh -huh. she can do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What what do you think, Anesh? Um, uh, this uh, <laughs> I, I probably you are married, you have children as well. Uh, probably we also have children. I'm not interested also in STEM. <laughs> they want to do other things. <laughs> well, I'm a classic case. Uh, my background is uh, more towards science and uh, technology, and yeah, what I'm yeah. dealing now is with legal uh, matters. So it's like totally off tangent from what uh, I studied, but. Uh, uh, I think what we what we could suggest as policymakers is to look at what the uh, real world needs rather than uh, what we are feeding to the uh, students when it comes to the syllabus. How often do we review the syllabus? I think so. Some of the syllabus that the, my kids are studying uh, uh, compared to what I was studying back from 1988 <laughs> up to 2000. <laughs> 2000, I think so. There, there are a little bit of similarities. I think uh, change has to be there. Another thing is being, uh, being uh, 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 people in the uh, top management and also in the middle management when uh, uh, new employees come into yeah, yeah. the market, uh, we want them to be more hands-on rather than uh, being uh, too theoretical. Uh, Theory is one, uh, but the thing is, can the theory be practiced in the real world? Because uh, what we need is people who are coming in and to solve problems immediately. Yeah. Uh, we can have uh, we can have a, a, a very good theory saying that uh, using this procedures, using this uh, kind of ideas, you can achieve it. But actually, in the real world, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, understand, understand. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I've been I've been uh, you know. <clears throat> thinking very hard actually the the what would i say actually the 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 the, the big point actually the big reason the real reason the real fundamental reason why students are not attracted to stem uh, there, there are two parts from it actually uh, <clears throat> how actually stem is being encultured or embedded in the thought of our children or student is how they start their life actually in the home environment. Okay, from primary school or even from kindergarten, uh, actually we should have already started inculcating yeah. this uh, culture, this uh, this exposure related to STEM. Okay, that will actually help to increase the uh, interest, interest in the subject. Yeah. yeah, and then we also probably can create some environment where. <clears throat> you know, the technicalities can be actually be exposed to them at a very early age. That is one. And then secondly, I think most question from the students uh, that we that we receive is basically, how does that translate into, you know, when I finish school and then I enter the job market, okay, if I learn statistic, I learn this particular theory and that particular theory and so on, how, how does that translate into me actually <laughs> sustaining <laughs> income every month. You know? <laughs> so we have actually to um, to bridge, you know, this expectation and also uh, 
how actually this stem actually can be lucrative a lucrative um <clears throat> career for them actually for, yeah. for the student and i think that should be clearly very stated so that so that we can actually attract more students i think that is a a gap because that kind of expectation is not clearly stated to them if it is clear, it is stated to me it is it has been stated yes blandly and at a very high level that's why we're having this issue right now it's a brain drain I, on the technology on the technical side i agree with you dr shafi and uh, maybe dr sarla and maybe your your colleagues uh, who are into the uh, researching on education is uh, uh, even the the, the uh, materials that they study in school and the questions, mm. the examination mm. questions should be, I think so, a little bit easier. And uh, it reflects to your day-to-day life. Okay, uh, why do we do this? How does it uh, reflect towards, uh, towards science, technology? Because until today, I'm still very fearful of my physics uh, in form, <laughs> form 4, form 5. Lucky I didn't take physics when I was in Form 6. I was in the bio side. Uh, but I still ended up being an engineer. So yeah. it's, like, uh, it's still, I, I'm still, I'm still afraid to go back to my physics books. <laughs> the uh, questions, yes. the ad maths. It's a killer questions. subject, so, actually. It is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some people, exactly. it is. So, so if we could uh, make it a bit much more simpler, uh, it attract it could attract uh, yeah, a lot I of think uh, should be to mm. study science and technology. You know, I I I asked myself actually when I was in form five, why do I have to take addition at maths? You know, why <laughs> why with this all this formula and uh, stuff like dx dy equal to, you know, I how how does this relate to my day to day life actually? <laughs> yeah. Actually, that, that's that's right. Actually, you know, uh, Dr. Shapi and Dr. Anish, actually, what you yeah. highlighted, that's what actually we are also scrutinizing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lessons actually taking place in isolation. Yeah. We we don't we do not know the actual application of it in real life. Mm. Yeah. So that is why actually this boredom comes in. You know, this uh, lack of interest. Because mm. we do not know how to apply that actually. Like maths, we learn so many topics in yeah. isolation, absolute isolation. So um, I, I think the ministry, to a certain extent, they are looking at it. The only issue is that the continuity of certain um, certain moves. Where, where should yeah. it be? Is it the ministry? Minister, the education ministry have to to own it basically and uh, they have to probably you know if I, i'm very sure there are some 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 plan and action that are in place and they're still going on and so on but um like, like dr sarah said has been dwindling has been <laughs> decreasing as far as the interest yeah. is concerned so obviously what they are doing now is not so effective so probably we need to go back to the drawing board you know and then start planning again to to because right now I don't know should own should we own by Ministry of Education you know okay, a group of people you know probably high profile people not many of them and start you know brain, uh, brainstorming the matter you know to get back into there should uh, be a task force actually there should be yeah, a task force yeah, and they yeah. should pilot task study force, first yeah, I agree with you yeah yeah they, they there should be a pilot study they cannot just like we can't implement because we as it is in Malaysia we come from all sorts of background. Uh, yeah. Various cultures are there. Uh, don't just talk. We don't have to talk about religion. Uh, we can just talk talk about walks of life itself. Mm-hmm. So um, and we have like rural areas and you know the teachers issues. You know managing how many too many students in one class. So yeah. a lot of institutional issues are there. Pedagogical issues are there. Um, therefore, you know the the belief system. Some people, you know, they don't want to do all this, all these hands-on activities. They just want spotted questions, you know, so that they can yeah. score an exam. <laughs> yeah, they just, they just couldn't be bothered, you know. Exactly. Uh, so there are so many issues actually. So perhaps, you know, uh, whoever is actually uh, in charge of this, you know, they should actually do some pilot studies and find out mm. whether it is applicable. Any policy, whether it is applicable in. Uh, in rural area or yeah. uh, urban areas or uh, whatever place. So yeah, I agree. 
Okay. Yeah, we need to pilot actually. The problem is that sometimes we straight away implement uh, by just looking at it, like as you said, just now theoretically. Um, sometimes it's not practicality is not there. No, no, yeah, I agree with <laughs> so you. So this is one area we have to look into. Yeah. <laughs> Must be very, very challenging uh, to these people. And uh, we yeah. see that this, we see this very clearly, but, um, you know, from, from my position as from myself, actually, there's, I don't know how much I can help. I don't know how I can help and so on, you know. But we know this is a pressing issue. This is a very fundamental issue, actually. Okay. Now, now we have the issue. I hope maybe Dr. Sarala, you, you are in the in, in some group or committee or, you know, maybe you can, <laughs> you can help. Thank you for both your suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thank you very much, Dr. Sarala, for highlighting this matter, sharing the issue with us. And then, uh, you know, we, we throw the ball back and forth. And let give some idea, me, you know, showing my dissatisfaction. And <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, you for, thank you. for, for yeah. this research. Actually, it is also important for us to know. This problem is still prevailing and we still need to, uh, to fix the issue. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, both of okay. you. Thank you. Now, I would like to call upon Anesh. Are you ready with your presentation? Yes, doctor. Just give me a moment to share. All right. Please. Okay, doctor, can you, uh, can you see the uh, slides? Not yet. I think, Dr. Sarala, you can actually uh, unshare your arm, uh, no? Okay. okay sorry, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. okay, now I can see. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shafi, and uh, to... Uh, Dr. Dan earlier and also Dr. Sarala. Uh, my topic will be something way off from uh, the first two uh, presentation, which were dwelling with the uh, education money is uh, more towards uh, federal land management and uh, towards land management in, uh, in general. So the topic of uh, discussion for today is uh, improving the strategic uh, aspects of federal land management. Uh, this research uh, was done uh, by uh, myself and my uh, understudy, uh, Afik Farhan. He couldn't be here today because uh, he's having his convocation uh, today. So, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so, it's, uh, so it'll be me. And um, my presentation will be just divided into uh, four main aspects. Number one is the introduction, objective, scopes, and then... Uh, what are the uh, corporate and business level strategies within the uh, uh, federal land uh, commissioner's uh, office? And uh, what are the strategies, uh, uh, implementation issues that are being faced by the, uh, by the office itself? And uh, uh, a couple of uh, recommendations uh, that uh, could be taken up by the uh, organizations to the organization to change uh, its perspective and its view on uh, federal land management. So, uh, a, small, uh, a short introduction, uh, land management was basically when, when, when it started way before time memoriam is more towards uh, uh, land ownership, security of tenure. But as uh, time uh, moved and uh, uh, people tend to have uh, uh, more understanding of uh, security of tenure, land ownership, it shifted towards uh, good governance. And uh, from good governance, uh, there was another aspect that came into, uh, into play, which is uh, more towards uh, sustainable development. So when you're talking about sustainable de development and when you're talking about good governance, you have to have adequate strategies to undertake those two elements. Uh, in Malaysia, we have already uh, uh, addressed the issues of security tenure, equality uh, in land ownership. So what we are looking now in the future in a uh, Malaysian land administration system is more towards uh, better strategies, good governance, and how we could interpret uh, sustainable uh, land development. So uh, when, uh, when we partake uh, this uh, uh, research, we wanted to address the strategic management is issues within the Federal Land Commissioner. 
uh, office uh, pertaining to managing federal land. So you have uh, the whole uh, uh, stage, which is the uh, uh, land administration. Then you have the state land administration. Uh, then you have the federal land management. So we focused into uh, federal land management rather than touching the whole land administration as a whole. Uh, we uh, we scoped it down to a very uh, small area, which is uh, federal land management. And also within federal land management, we were looking into how to generate uh, revenues from short-term tenancies, from leasing. Uh, we did not touch on uh, enforcement because uh, for the benefit of uh, Dr. Shafi and Dr. Sarla, when uh, we are talking about enforcement, uh of uh, land that uh, we have to work together with the uh, with the state land uh, uh, administration that means with the uh, state authorities with the uh, with the uh, uh, department of uh, land and mines the respective land and mines and also the land administrators which is beyond the control of the federal land commissioner's office um we uh, we took a, a, a mixed method uh, approach where you had uh, quantitative and also qualitative uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, qualitative, is uh, we looked into uh, some uh, uh, documentations, uh, regulations, SOPs, uh, and also uh, some of the uh, the circulars that had been uh, issued by the uh, uh, Federal Land Commissioner's Office to look at what the SOPs, what are the strategies, what are the the uh, the objectives that the uh, the uh, office had. And also, we looked into uh, uh, what are the uh, the uh, strategic plans that were uh, put in place in the uh, Federal Land Commissioner's Office uh, based, uh, to to substantiate the uh, the uh, qualitative uh, information that we gathered. We had to do a little bit of uh, a quantitative uh, study, which uh, we did some survey, but uh, our survey was very targeted. So we had a stratified kind of uh, uh, sampling method where we we uh, we go, uh, collected the uh, we sent out questionnaires. The questionnaires was also very structured uh, to uh, to to address the objectives that we had. So we furnished it to the corporate level, the business level, and also the operational level within the federal land uh, commissioner's office. So from that. Uh, we identified what the Federal Land Commissioner's corporate strategy model was. Uh, the vision of the corporate level uh, of uh, the Federal Land Commissioner is to have an electronic federal land management environment. Currently, we have a manual kind of a system or a semi-automated uh, kind of system. So what happened uh, was in uh, whatever that uh, we have manually, we, we translate that into an uh, uh, Excel format or a sheet or also uh, we had some uh, 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 information technology uh, kind of uh, uh, apparatus where uh, data relating to uh, uh, land uh, documentations, the land titles, what are the areas, which ministry is using it, uh, which uh, what are they using it for, which agency is sitting on that piece of land, and uh, what are the, uh, the area that is covered. But the problem is it's not interlinked with the uh, zoning uh, information, uh, local authority information. So that is what that the uh, corporate uh, level of the Federal Land Commissioner's office is looking is to have an integrated system where at the end of the day, uh, the Federal Land Commissioner can advise uh, the Prime Minister or even the uh, government of Malaysia Okay, we have this uh, this part of land, uh, this piece of land which is owned by the federal government. This is what activities that we can foresee, because at the moment uh, the land bank of the federal land commissioner uh, is as big as the state of Malacca, uh, Kuala Lumpur, and Penang put together. So uh, for for the benefit of doubt, uh, Dr. Shafi and uh, Sarala, the federal land commissioner is the richest individual in Malaysia. When it comes to land, okay, uh, we pay uh, we pay uh, quick rent up to two hundred and fifty million dollars uh, ringgit yearly to the respective uh, uh, states uh, in the context of holding thirty five thousand titles registered under the Federal Land Commissioner, and we have uh, an uh, additional uh, reserves of six thousand five hundred lots uh, of uh, land 
uh, which encompasses all the hospitals, schools, uh, certain uh, public universities, uh, police stations, uh, your fire stations, uh, the government buildings, which are used by, uh, by the federal government, military camps, uh, your airports, your highways, your uh, rail tracks, uh, stations, the LRT stations, MRT station, whatever that you talk about on uh, public amenities, it is registered under the Federal Land Commissioner. So that, that gives you a perspective of what we are dealing when it comes to federal land management. So these are the, uh, the, uh, the corporate strategy model. But uh, how do we go about uh, what were the basis of the corporate level uh, vision? It is based on a, on a, a growth strategies option relying on intensive strategies. So when you're talking about growth strategy options, uh, uh, focusing on intensive strategies, this is what the corporate level is thinking about. So what, what uh, does the corporate level think? We need to have a product development. So what are the product development within the Federal Land Commissioner? Number one is to have a system called My Land. Number two is a system called eTANA. So eTANA or eLand is what the respective states are using where you and I, when we want to deal uh, on a transaction, land transaction, like, like a transfer, if you're buying a house or you're buying a property, when you go to the, uh, the respective land office, they use eTANA or eLand. But when you come to the Federal Land Commissioner's uh, office, when we are looking at uh, data pertaining to federal land, that's where this, the MyLand system comes in. So there's two separate uh, uh, systems, but both are owned by the Federal Land Commissioner's office. So that is, you're talking about uh, uh, IT products. Then we are looking at stability. We need to stabilize the administration of the Federal Land Commissioner. Number one is improving the current services of the Federal Land. So what do we, what do we provide? We provide uh, advisory uh, services to all the respective ministries, all the 28 ministries within the Federal Government of Malaysia. Uh, we uh, we uh, provide uh, functions of procurement of land through a land acquisition, to purchasing of land and through application of alienation to the respective states for the purpose of the federal government. So we had to stabilize those uh, procedures, which are in some, some avenues really archaic. From 1965, we have been using the same uh, particular uh, models. Then uh, when we look at the new generation of the corporate uh, uh, level of the uh, federal land commissioner, uh, they are thinking about smart partnership. We can't uh, be working in silo. So that's where you have smart partnership with uh, the uh, survey department, that is JUPERM. You have the, uh, 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 this thing, what the, uh, the companies uh, uh, commission. Then you have with the evaluation departments, you have with the mineral and geoscience uh, department, the respective land officers, the intern, uh, internal, uh, internal revenue board, for your stamping of the duties of all the transactions that comes to the federal government, not the state, the revenues. So we generated about six billion US uh, Malaysian ringgit for uh, year 2021, and year 2020 was three billion uh, ringgit. Then with the courts and also with the financial institutions. Financial institution is with the banks where we uh, we provide. Uh, we have to check with the banks what uh, how do they release the loan. What are the systems that uh, are being used? What kind of documentation that facilitates the uh, the general public when it comes to uh, those kind of uh, uh, elements? So this is the corporate level uh, strategy that is in place. But then again, once your corporate uh, your corporate level has a particular uh, uh, strategy, it has to be translated into the business strategy. There is this is where your competitive ad advantage comes in. But uh, you, might, uh, you might feel that uh, uh, the land administration, there's only one uh, service provider. We do not have an alternative because the government provides that service. So what uh, competitive advantages that uh, you are looking at? Well, uh, we do not look uh, domestically. What we are looking is uh, externally, you compare with your neighbors, uh, such as Singapore, the United Arab Emirates, Australia, and Canada. 
So that's where the ease of doing business plays an important role in attracting uh, foreign direct investments. This is where the business uh, level uh, people have to understand what we should uh, do to, uh, uh, to support the corporate vision and also to push forward the, uh, the ideas of the corporate level within the organization. So this is a, a model that was developed from our research. So we found out that the business strategy uh, model in, uh, in uh, the Federal Land uh, Commissioner's uh, Office, taking into the RBV, the uh, uh, resource-based uh, view uh, model, this is what is being done at the moment. What they are doing is that the, they have identified that their strategic capabilities are the my land system and also the land administration uh, certificate, which is being given to the individuals who are working within the Federal Land Commissioner's Office. They feel that their strategic uh, resource is, besides the system, is the individuals or the officers who are working within uh, the Federal Land Commissioner's Office. It's, it's a very uh, specific kind of a duty. Uh, you have to mold these people to provide the services uh, uh, that is uh, needed by the Federal Land Commissioner. And uh, how do we go about is through training, through capabilities, uh, to having systems, to having uh, them to uh, deal with the uh, uh, stakeholders. And that's how they produce the competitive age uh, for the Federal Land Commissioner's office. So we, uh, we have looked into the, the corporate level uh, strategies, and we also looked at the business strategy models. But uh, when, we, uh, when we got our data back, we found that there was no link between, there was something wrong between the, uh, uh, the corporate strategy and also the business strategy. Uh, we, uh, we imposed the uh, PDCA uh, model, plan, do, check and act. And we found out that in the Federal Land Commissioner's Office, uh, there's very good planning and there's very good doing, but uh, there's no check and there's no uh, uh, re-evaluation of the plans that had been done. So we found mm -hmm. out that every uh, for a span of 10 years, we found that most of the plans were there. They were doing it, but uh, there was no check and there was no uh, re-evaluation thing of those plans. So we found out that this, uh, the lack of these two, uh, these two elements of act and check uh, has uh, hindered the progress of the Federal Land Commissioner's Office. So these were the main issues that had been uh, identified uh, when, we, when we were looking at how Federal Land Management uh, has not achieved its full uh, capabilities. And uh, we hope that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, organization could look into this, uh, uh, this aspect. And then again, uh, we also looked at the structure of the, uh, the Federal Land Commissioner's Office. Uh, there was no distinct uh, differences between the business and also the operational uh, level. It, it was very diluted. So the people who were supposed to, to provide uh, competitive uh, advantages for the organization were also doing the operational uh, level. So uh, you're doing things and you expect to sell that product to your customers outside. Uh, that is not what uh, organization should do. You should have a corporate level. You should have a business level which looks into what kind of products that we should sell, what kind of uh, services that we should enhance, and then let your operational level do those work, not dilute the people who are looking for strategic advantages to the operational level. So, uh, we found out that, uh, uh, that the Federal Land uh, Commissioner's Office should open up, should move, and should uh, not dilute their business and operational uh, level. They have to have a distinctive uh, uh, difference between uh, the business and also the operational uh, level. So uh, those are our, uh, that was our short uh, research on how uh, the Federal Land Commissioner's Office could uh, enhance 
its uh, its own structure, its own uh, its own uh, businesses to provide a better uh, federal land management system uh, in uh, uh, in providing a better service for the uh, government. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Anesh. Also interesting subject actually to discuss. This is very, very new to me actually. <laughs> very new. <Right. laughs> well, Dr. Sarala, do you have any anything to ask, uh, Anish? Uh, maybe you first, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm interested to know actually, Anish. Um, yes. Where do you draw the line? Uh, the, uh, the land is normally the the land is normally under the purview of the state government, right? Yes, yes. And here come the Federal Land uh, Commission, Commissioner. Yep. Uh, so I do not know, uh, where do you draw the line with respect to responsibility and, uh, you know? Okay, uh, under the uh, Constitution, under Schedule, uh, the second list of the nine schedule, uh, approving of, uh, of land titles, approving of any permits, and uh, approving of uh, demarcation of uh, areas is under the purview of the state. But the constitution itself under Article 76 for, uh, regulates that the uh, federal government can come out with an uh, with a, uh, act which, uh, which will uh, synchronize all the procedures mm -hmm. of each and every state. That's where the, uh, the Director General of Land and Mines come in, comes in, who also is the Federal Land Commissioner. So, okay. uh, so you have the federal government coming up with uh, regulations, uh, which has to be uh, practiced in, 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 uh, in uh, symphony in all the states. So that means if uh, you can, uh, you can uh, approve uh, uh, permits for three years, so ev every inch of the land in this country, in every state, it's three years or you can give a lease of 99 years, which is practiced by all the states, or you can also give uh, freehold land. And uh, what kind of uh, the powers of the state authorities is all uh, controlled by the act, which is enacted by the federal government. Then you have the federal land commissioner, who is also the property manager of the federal government. So okay. this is where, okay, so you have okay. to look at the federal land commissioner, something like, like, like a property manager. Uh, like okay. uh, big uh, property uh, companies like Saim Dhabi or Genting and yeah. those kind of people who are holding a lot of, uh, of uh, land. So uh, when uh, federal government wants to pump in money to build infrastructures in the states, so the, uh, uh, the government has to hold, the federal government has to hold that property and they hold it by, by titles or by reserves. The federal government cannot uh, register their names uh, in the title. So we can't say the uh, Prime Minister or the uh, Secretary General of uh, such a ministry holds the same. So under the law, the only person that can hold land for the federal government is the Federal Land Commissioner. So he I comes see. under the he comes under the Act, the Federal Land Commissioners Act 1957, Act uh, 349. So okay. uh, so all the schools all the hospitals, all the police stations, all certain universities, uh, uh, their, uh, their land is registered under the Federal Land Commissioner. Okay. Airports. My, my, right. Okay. My, my next, my, my next uh, inquiry is about ownership there. Okay. There, there right. is a private owner of a land. Right. Individual owner and also a company organization own the land, you know. Right. Small and big as well. And then uh, the, the, the Federal Land Commissioner also so-called owned land, okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. Government land, <laughs> yes. owned by, by FLC, so-called. They're the only, yes. probably the, 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 the authorized name, basically, the owner of yes. the property, right? Yes. So when the, when the government want to build a hospital in an area which the government does not own any land, so government has to procure the land from the owner, right? From the exactly. private ownership, right? Exactly. 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 Okay. So like you have to sell the you, you have to sell the land because this is a government initiative. So you have no no two way about it. <laughs> is, uh, okay. is that true? Uh, the, uh, there's there's three options. 
If you okay. want to do the really draconian way, we mm-hmm. can use the Land Acquisition Act 1960. So what happens is the uh, uh, it can go two ways, either the state government or the federal government. The, let's say that we want to build a, a highway. So currently, there's, uh, there's news that uh, we're going to build a couple of highways in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, Klang Valley. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's say the uh, the authorities have identified uh, uh, an alignment of uh, of the uh, of the highway would be passing through from point A to point B, but it has to go through some private ownership. So some private owners like houses or maybe some uh, factories there. So we can uh, number one we can use the land acquisition. So the state will uh, uh, the federal government will acquire. Okay. So we will pay compensation to the uh, to the respective proprietors. The respective proprietors cannot challenge the act of the acquisition. The acquisition. Okay. <laughs> they can only challenge the uh, the uh, acreage and also the value of the compensation. That's all. So mm-hmm. if you don't agree with the price being paid by the uh, uh, by the federal government to acquire, you go to court, you challenge, and uh, the court will only increase or decrease the value. So that that's one. The second thing is you you can uh, disagree with the uh, the uh, the area. Say that uh, uh, during the hearing of the acquisition, say that there's only uh, we're supposed to acquire ten acres, but finally uh, when it's registered on the title, there's only nine acres. So there's a difference of one acre. You can go to court to challenge and get the additional compensation for the uh, for the okay. extra. Okay. That's one method. So that would be clearly uh, easier, but it takes uh, a lot of negotiation during the hearing process and you get a lot of brick bats. Yeah, the, second, yeah. uh, the second option is to, uh, uh, to apply to the state uh, lands which are not, have not been uh, registered. So that's what you call state lands. So that means you don't have titles, so you don't have, uh, uh, you don't have uh, reserves on that. So it's purely state land. Mm. So what do you do? You apply to the state, uh, you pay a premium. The premium could be on market price. Uh, you pay it to the state and the state will issue a title to the federal government. That's see, option okay. number two. Option number three is what you have said, that uh, negotiation, you go and buy that land from the, uh, from the public. So most of the time, uh, option three is always way back. Like we, we will never use <laughs> the last option. The last option. That. That's the last option. <laughs> the first two options is normally the way that we acquire lands for federal projects. Yeah, yeah. But normally the compensation, like, why is it, is it at the premium level or is it premium plus plus? Um, uh, there are a few criteria, uh, but uh, we normally base our our valuation from the uh, valuation office uh, offices. From the evaluation department, so they normally they will check around with the uh, with the uh, market price around, mm, mm. Uh, and uh, some added uh, injurious uh, factors. Maybe uh, if we are acquiring and uh, the uh, we feel and the landowner or the acquiring agency feels that uh, we when we acquire we divide the land into two, uh, it would be less economical to the uh, to the uh, proprietor. So why don't we just acquire the additional listing? So prices will go up, and it also differs from the category of land. Either uh, uh, in some states, commercial land is higher than industries. Yes, yes. In some states, is industry. The agriculture is always the lowest. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to ask one more question. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. That. I I have no question. <laughs> About the about the <clears throat> uh, the plan of, of of you know implementing the the, the 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 system that you mentioned earlier, you know the itana and then my land, are, are those uh, initiative in place already, or is it at the planning stage? Or okay, uh, itana is fully uh, is fully being used in uh, KL, Labuan, and Putrajaya, and also Pera. Okay, so it's so we, already roll out into protection yes. use. Okay, yes. some states yes. have not actually implemented. Some states already yes. have. Yes. Okay. Uh, next we are, next we will be moving into Slango by this year, and then okay. uh, Trenggano next year. So, uh, most of uh, Peninsular Malaysia will have uh, Itana by two thousand twenty four. I see. Okay. All right. Uh, so that means uh, you'll be fully uh, fully uh, registering uh, titles electronically. And I'm also working on the amendments of the National Land Code 
where we will try to bring in the uh, online uh, uh, application. So what uh, uh, Dr. Shafi and Dr. Sarala, if you want to do any transaction in the future, you can sit at home, no need to go to the land office, ah, key okay. in your information and you send it straight to the uh, land office. So uh, my team is, uh, uh, is uh, doing the amendments. So we hope that in, in uh, grace of God, by ne next year, <laughs> we could table in the parliament. Then uh, I think by 2024 or 2025, you can do that at okay. home. Okay. All right. So um, how about yes. the, the, the e-tana thing? Uh, yeah, e-tana is 2024. That, that is uh, in the land office will be fully electronic. What we are trying to okay. expand now is to the general public. So okay. you have to understand eTANA is, uh, is fully electronic within the land office. You still have to fill forms. All right, all right, okay. But currently, you still have to fill forms. So uh, the new amendments, you don't need to fill uh, forms manually. You'll right, be doing okay. it online and uh, with a digital signature to, uh, to uh, compensate the, uh, your manual signature. How about uh, how about uh, tanah in um, you know Sabah and Sarawak? You know Sabah and Sarawak is unique. You, they have uh, yes. tanah adat stuff like that. You know how how do yes, you uh, uh, Sabah and Sarawak doesn't come under the preview of the director uh, <laughs> general. They are, so it's they under are the respective state of Sabah and Sarawak, right? Yes, yes. So the yes, federal has no hand at all on the no. No. no no okay okay all right all right. I think it's part Special of the privileges. <laughs> It's part of the agreement, Malaysian agreements, exactly. 1963, exactly. I think, between the exactly. um, uh, federal and also state of Sabah and Sarawak, I think. Yes, even if the uh, constitution is clearly stated that uh, anything that uh, is, has been agreed uh, under the uh, National Land Council, uh, when it pertains to land and stuff, it doesn't uh, cover Sabah and Sarawak. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sensitive issue. <laughs> Okay, I have no more question. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. This is new to me, yes, so I'm very interested to know actually. Okay, sure, Dr. Sure, Sarala, sure. do you have any? Uh, just, just curious, you know, um, do all these projects actually come with maintenance as well? Because, you know, uh, sometimes we see it's quite sad actually oh, to yeah, see, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, like huge projects taking place mm. and then suddenly things go wrong and, you know, um, I don't know. We hear. We don't hear things after that. So <laughs> the system oh, go kaput, you know, for one week, two weeks. Nobody, nobody look at it. <laughs> so so we yeah. consumer people on the street suffer, you know. <laughs> I think exactly. I think the gov the government has already learned from uh, many uh, many of its uh, uh, its uh, previous uh, partakes. So uh, now with the new uh, new projects and stuff, uh, the cost of maintenance is also. Uh, calculated within the uh, budget that has mm. been approved by each Malaysian plant. So what Actually. happens is that uh, procurement will be, will be under the uh, development budget and then the maintenance will be under the operational budget. So it's like two different uh, okay, uh, budgets okay. within, within uh, the uh, Malaysian plant. I think that is the right thing to do actually. Um, uh, <clears throat> what what needs to be operationalized needs to be operationalized. Otherwise, your <clears throat> your account statement or you your <laughs> your balance sheet does not look <laughs> does not look exactly. so correct you know quote unquote exactly okay all right <clears throat> i have no further question do you have any dr sarawa um, no no i think uh, dr anish actually um, uh, it, it's a very important issue also actually to yeah, to, yeah. to discuss and to research yeah Agree. so yeah, i think dr good. anish can come up with more research you know related to land you know uh, <laughs> like, like you say, I mean, uh, if you can, you, if you can actually cut the processing time related to land matters, you know, that will they will have the cost of reducing the cost of doing business, and also actually that is part of uh, criteria for you know foreign investment, uh, international companies who want to come and invest in Malaysia, they look at those, you know. The cost of doing business. One of the part is basically how fast actually the approval can be provided or can be given, you know, from the day they start doing it. Thank you very much, Anish. I think very, Thank very, you, very, you. very highlighting to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope I hope uh, uh, in the future you can come up with uh, uh, you know other research. I think there's a lot of potential research that can be done in the in the land commission. You know? Sure, we'll do, Doctor. So, we'll at do, the we'll same do. time, I also thank Dr. Sarala for joining us. Dr. Dan uh, left already because he's got another meeting and so on. 
um, <clears throat> it could be more people attending this one, but unfortunately, all of them opted not to join the virtual conference, you know. But on the hindsight, actually, this is good. So we can have more intimate and, and closer discussion about your, your presentation and also your research papers. So with that, um, <clears throat> I think we come to the end of this uh, virtual conference session. So I thank you, both of you. Um, I hope to be able to see you and uh, host you again in, the, in, the, in our future conferences, either face-to-face -face or other virtual conference like this, okay? So uh, <clears throat> I wish you all the best in your future undertaking. Um, we are researchers in a, in a real sense. So besides doing our, you know, work day in and day out, you know, we are also required. Dr. Sarala should know, you know from the academic standpoint, <laughs> you have to do research. You have to come up with your research and so on. So I hope we have thousands of research every day, every year and so on. One, two, three, maybe can be commercialized, you know, can be used in production for productive use by the community, by the public at large. I think that's the main purpose why we do we have to do research. So with that, thank you very much. That's the end of our virtual conference. I hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hi. Thank you, thank Dr. Shafi. Thank, thank you, Dr. Shafi. Thank you, Dr. Salva. Goodbye. Okay, bye.